Happy New Year. Happy holidays, everybody. Today, we're taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations we've had this last year around the case against Brian Koberger. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Jennifer Coffin-Dapper is with us, retired FBI special agent, Hidden Killers daily contributor. Jennifer, let's talk about Brian Koberger's case. There's a new expert witness that is on the docket. I know you saw that and have tweeted about it. What's your thought on that one? It's about genetic genealogy, and they're certainly going to try and poke holes into that. Not surprised at all. As you know, uh, let's see now, it's probably been six weeks or more ago, they retained another attorney, attorney number four, that is, in fact, a expert in DNA. And so I expected that they would also then employ an expert in DNA itself. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is an expert attorney, but they're going to want an expert report And I found it interesting that her background is botany, you know, kind of odd to, you know, the study of plants and I'm sure their genealogy. But anyway, I thought that was extremely interesting, the background of this witness. Uh, But nevertheless, that's who they've chosen. And they're going to try to poke holes. But at the end of the day, they have a buccal swab from Brian Koberger, and it is the DNA on the sheath. So I'm not sure really mu- mm-hmm. how much traction they're going to get out of this. And credentials do mean something in this. I mean, it, the world of expert witnesses, and I think the general public needs to understand what that means. It's not a witness that has anything to do with the case itself. This is someone who is an expert in the field of what is being discussed, what's being questioned, and such. So you put the name expert in front of it, you think, oh, they really know it. And that's where credentials come into play. When botany is your specialty, how exactly are you an expert over here in genealogy? What is the bar really for someone to technically be an expert witness, quote unquote? Well, such a great question. And essentially courts of law will decide if a person is an expert. So they will, the defense or the prosecution will hire someone as an expert. And that is typically based on their curriculum vitae, the CV, as it's termed. And they'll look it over and that CV will have on it pages and pages of their background, their education, their experience. And then that attorney will make an assessment is this person an expert in terms of them being able to show that in a court of law? Do they trust this person from the standpoint, what is their history in terms of expert testimony? Have they been deemed an expert in a court of law already? And how has their body of work in terms of expert reports, because remember, so few cases go to trial. Yeah, Those expert reports are often key in plea negotiations and money negotiations in cases. So they will look at their body of work. They will present their witness in a court of law. They will go through the CV on the stand, and then that judge will deem them an expert or not an expert. There's also something called a Daubert hearing. And during those hearings, either side can object to their expertise. And that happens often. Um, So that's how, Tony, you get to whether somebody is truly an expert or not. The judge will make that decision. Judge, judge in this case. Is there almost different tiers of expert witnesses where you got your A-listers who are going to be very expensive? They're going to have a lot of experience. They're going to have testified all over the place and really have the solid credentials. Then you got the bees that are kind of, you know, they're working their way up there. They maybe not have as much experience, but they know their stuff. And you kind of get your C and D listers that it's kind of a side hustle, if you will. And maybe they kind of know their stuff a little bit. I know we saw one of them in, I believe it was the, it was, I think it was the Murdoch case or it was where the, like your testing of the phone was you tossed it across the room and everyone was, are you serious? This is what you did. That seemed more like a C or a D class expert witness. With something like this, what are we looking at here as far as who they've brought in thus far in terms of how you would judge them? Are these the A-listers, the B-listers, the C and Ds? Are we got a mix? What do we have going on here in terms of who Bill team has hired to come on and help with the show? 
Well, certainly in terms of their crime scene expert, that's an A-lister. Uh, okay. He is amazing. He's well thought of. And I will be very interested to see his report on what he has to say. I think the two media experts were also probably very good in their field. I say that because, of course, I read that expert witness report. Yeah, you ended uh, up on it. <laughs> I ended up on it. And so they did a, definitely a deep dive into everybody's reach in social media. A huge deep dive, way deeper than I would think ever you would need for such a hearing. Sure. I mean, it was just so overboard. But nevertheless, so, but this expert gives me pause only because of their background. It's kind of odd. It's, you know, hiring somebody that knows about plants to talk about human DNA genealogy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But, but to your point, yes, there are A, B, C, and then the not so good at all. But Tony, I think one of the ways to make that a list just isn't your background. It's are you moral? Yeah. And really good expert witnesses are of moral character. They the money they can get the money from anyone. In other words, they're so sought after they can pick and choose their clients. Sure. And so they don't need to sell out. Their opinions are true and honest. And that's the kind of expert you want. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.